All right, welcome officially to mini meet number six. And here's Mr. Recklinwald on the floor along with his D4C SE. And we're going to do something with it. Stay tuned to find out what. Well, here we are with some pieces from a D4C SE, not mine, and it needs a cleaning. And what better thing to clean it with is an E2 brush. Go and clean this. So, Definitely got some dirt in there. I guess this is going to be at least a partial tear down and at some point in time we'll put it back together again. So unfortunately, had to drill out one screw in here. There, there's four screws that goes around the edge of this particular plate, but we managed to get that off. So we're taking Thomas's D4 and um, just kind of trying to clean everything up because this hasn't been touched in well probably since its origination. And even the nut. That held the spider on was was frozen in there so we're just basically beating on it and beating on it you can see how dirty everything can get so this is why he wanted to do that this okay, goes so, to this yeah. goes to show you that water does not filter absolutely everything yeah you need to have 
Oh, what happened, Phil, sir? Yeah, plenty of built up dust in here. Two. And I know I I know absolutely nothing about this machine. When I bought it, it was just bought kind of like buying a house, sight Ooh. unseen. <laughs> now here's where the fun begins. There we go. There's that, and you can see what's in there. Yeehaw, bitty! Wipe your. <laughs> you put your name in that. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know what? That's so dried on. There we go. I have to scrape it. Wow, look at that. Well, you know, it's built up over, what, 20-some-odd years? It's a 97 mile, so it's Ooh. 21 years old. Yeah, and, you know, there's obviously some kind of a bearing in there we can play with. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I do this because I don't do these all the time. I have two of them myself, but I don't have this stuff memorized. Okay, so we have this piece here that comes out. Something there, just get a good view of that. And then we have a smaller fan. Front. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There's that. Fan number one. It's in there. Yeah. And then here's fan number two. Fan number two, the big one. All right. We can see how that goes on. That's nice. See, I never remember this stuff. And we have this other kind of separator in here. Look at that dude. And it's got a kind of a flat side here, and it's got this other side that's got a little notch on it, and the notch points out. It looks like an hourglass figure. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's something like that, and it's got a little not notch that points out. So, is that the hourglass figure you was talking about before? Yeah, yeah. So that well, yeah, that, that's the hourglass figure. But of course, there, there's two of these, but I mean, they're they're shaped differently, they're different. obviously. Yeah. Okay. Then the last band. Ta -da. Ta da! And I think the first fan and the last fan, yep, are exactly the same size. So they just kind of sandwich these dudes just like that. I'm just showing this stuff so I can remember how to put it together and I can <laughs> review the video. Not only that, you can also yep. see what it's like to take apart a D4 yep. for any of wow. you folks who have D4s. That is, uh, well, yeah. That is okay, so. We're going to have to uh, try to clean this up as much as possible. I don't think we're going to take the entire axle out in this, no. if in this case. I don't, I don't think we're going to actually do that. I know you can, but... Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so that's how you get that out. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, so that's in there. Yeah. It looks like this is... You know, it's exactly the same on, on both sides, so it doesn't matter how we put that back in. There's no orientation on that. And then that's it. Well, let me see another one. There? No, I think that I think that's it. That's like the other plate. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> a cleaning we will go. Stay tuned. Yep.
Okay, now that Thomas is uh, washed and dried everything, let's go and put her back together. Do Half need to clean that up a little bit. Half a bottle of... Uh, yeah, sun tea. Yeah. yeah. A bottle of sun tea late. <laughs> no, not that. I was going to say half a bottle of a... Uh, oh, palm olive. Yeah, yeah dish, dish soap. soap that's right. <laughs> hey, when you live in West Virginia where I live, that's how you get dishes clean. You just put half a bottle of soap in there. Sure. There you go. That That's the ticket. So this isn't going to be a complete tear down with absolutely everything, only because we're really just a little short on time. But here's... I just wanted to get it clean. Here's, here's a lot clean. of it. I don't want it to be like, yeah. it just needed to clean. It didn't need no parts or nothing. It works spick and span. You've all yeah. watched my channel. Mm -hmm. You've seen it. I've showed it off. It works It works like a gym. It just right, needs so. clean. <laughs> now we got to figure out what goes where. And that's the nice thing with the video that we have. We have backup. Yeah, we do. So we at least kind of know what goes where. And in case any of you guys are wondering why I have not posted anything on my channel recently, technically I have nothing to post. I have no new vacuums. I have nothing. So what you're seeing here is technically the new footage for my stuff. Now we have somewhere. I'm oh, not really on camera that much today. Sorry, folks. Right. Okay, we are missing one part. And that's not... That's the, yeah, we're missing a... And I wonder if that's down the drain. Okay, so here we go. Back to the disposal to find the missing part. All right, so we found the missing part still in the sink. Missing this little guy right here. It doesn't have an orientation. So let's see if I can get these parts in the right direction. Had to go and review the video. Ah, let's scrape. All right, this got a little notch in it right here. And this one down here is flat. So flat side in first, and then we go with this guy right here, and then this guy right here. Hey, it goes in quick when you know what you're doing. And then this really is omnidirectional. Doesn't really seem to make any difference one way or another. Yeah, it's exactly the same. There we are right there. Oh, yay. Okay, so just time-wise, uh, normally we do something with this bearing. But I tell you what, might put a little grease in there anyway, just because, see, see some of the corrosion you can get, although there's not that much there. But I can still go ahead and actually put some on there, just for something to do. Just because I'm the grease guy. Why not? He's a vacuum expert. What yeah. is he talking about? Doesn't hurt anything. And to beat it all, look what he's got. The famous wheel bearing grease. Yeah, the wheel bearing grease. That's right. Put it in there. That certainly won't hurt anything. I've, I've done this for mine, so it's fine. Just that every spot where I see potential corrosion, I like to put that on there. But you know what? Look, look, look at this axle right here. This thing is shiny as all get out, and all I did was wipe it off. So water isn't getting in here. But it did seem to corrode a little bit uh, other uh, for some other pieces further down in there. So, you know, what the heck? Why not? The sink water that I washed these parts in is black. Yeah. Nasty. Alright. Get in there. Now let's see, I want to get the right orientation. Alright. Line it up. Back in there. There we go. So there is an orientation, so it kind of clicks in. Now I get to snap these little dudes on. Shouldn't be too bad. There's one. I have learned, folks, these D series rainbows are a pain in the rear to work on if you do decide to get a rainbow i highly 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 recommend getting an e2 it is much easier to work on if you have to have it service you will just trust me when i say this get an e2 series if you want a rainbow don't get an older uh d series get an e series cool Nice. <coughs> so, everything moves nicely. All right, that's wonderful. So, now let's see. Now we got to get the rest of these parts back on. So, if I'm remembering right, this is looking pretty good. I think this goes on like that. Hey, that's always nice to have that. This is going to go on here. 
then we have this little brass nut and you know this actually was stuck on here so I'm glad I greased this just a little bit just so it doesn't get stuck on again So there that is. I will tighten that up in a minute. And now, unfortunately, we had to drill one of the screws out. So I'm going to put this back in here like that. And let's go ahead and put the three screws I can put back in, back in. And we'll call it a day. So yeah, see, see, I don't know if you can see that, the, the rusty head. So that's just, it, it kind of happens once in a while. All the water vapor hitting it. Yeah, I guess. But you know, this thing had a, a seal on the top of it. Okay, that one's fighting me a bit. Not anymore. And we got this last one that I can put in. Go, come on, alignment. All right. So we're going to tighten these up as much as possible. Of course, there's going to be there's going to be a gasket that eventually has to be put back on there. But this one is going to have to be replaced because it's got a nice little crack right there. And I think I've got something I can tighten this nut up with a bit. And I think, there we go. It spins freely. Yep, spins freely. That nut is not coming off. And we're in good shape. And don't forget, Put the little exhaust fan back on the top. That just kind of screws on. Not a big deal there. Hello. Get back on there. Come on. I'm trying to get the thread started. Oh. And now we got it. And that's the ticket. First, you got to get the wires out of the way. So, and the way we are, as long as that's, there we go, gotta get that tighter. That's it. All right, now we're good. See? Perfect. Yay. All right, we're gonna polish the commutator. This is an extremely dangerous way of doing it. Do not do this at home. Do not do this. Okay, we're gonna do a little practice run. Make sure I got it spinning the right way. Contact. All right, I just want to make sure I know which way it's spinning. All right, that way. All right, here we go. Very, very uh, black, very dark. And there we go. So I hope you were able to hear the motor speed uh, go up just a little bit. But isn't that nice? So Look how after shiny 20 years, is. Yeah, isn't that fantastic? All right. So like I said, very dangerous. We've got a couple of experts here who practice at this crazy stuff. Don't do this at home. Well, I have on loan this Electrolux 1521 over here with a PN6A L-shaped power nozzle. I've never used this L-shaped power nozzle before, or any L-shaped power nozzle. Of course, this is my, uh, been in the family since the beginning of time, literally, we purchased it new, 1980-1401B, and it's got a PN4 power nozzle in it. That one's mostly metal. This one is all plastic. So, let's take a look at the nozzles, just so you can kind of compare the difference. Because, boy, there is a difference. I mean, 
mean, look at that size difference. That's just amazing. So like I said, I've done somewhat of a cursory cleanup on them, but that is quite a difference. So the bristles here on the 6A are short and fairly stiff, relatively speaking. And the ones on the 4 are twice as long, easily, and very, very soft. The question is, how well will the 6 nozzle actually manage to push, to feel like when you're, when you're pushing on the carpet itself? Here, let me move that further back, get a better view. How difficult will it be? Because the 4 isn't too bad to push, but I've got the upgraded hose, so that gives me a little more airflow. some good airflow that we will eventually measure but I gotta tell you this power nozzle is very difficult to push it just kind of scrapes along the carpet now I know I can use the little suction relief up there but still wow that is much more difficult to push than the four is So it seems like it's a tradition here, uh, mini meet number six. Thomas is going to run the 8850. Let her rip, Thomas. It's a squeaking. And those are the bristles. Squeaky bristles. Ah, wonderful wind down. Fabulous.